Are you guys ready for a speaker cable review? I'm going to bring that to you. Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala with Audioholics. And today I'm going to do something, the first on our channel, I'm going to review some speaker cables. And you're probably wondering, why am I reviewing speaker cables? I've spent 20 plus years now basically debunking the myths in speaker cables, talking about speaker cables, measuring them. But I figured why not actually review a pair of speaker cables? And I chose these Kimber ATCs for several reasons. The, basically, these have been my reference cables in my primary speakers since I've pretty much started this business. Um, I started out with the Status 8Ts from RBH that had Kimber cables wired inside of them and I was using the ATCs for those. These are the new SVTRS fully active speaker system. It's the first of its kind. These are the first samples and I was very fortunate that RBH brought them down to Florida Expo in, uh, in uh, 2020, the Florida Expo show. They debuted them there and they allowed them to come here for me to listen to them and compare them to my old reference speakers. Now, initially, RBH um, demoed these speakers at the show with a, uh, with a speaker cable called Claris, the Aqua cables. And these cables were very bulky, very expensive, and I didn't quite think they were a great fit for what I was doing in this room. And when I went and I measured them, they didn't measure up to all the hype. In fact, they had higher inductance than regular 10 gauge zip cord, very low, very low resistance, which is a good thing but the inductance was pretty high on them and it, you can actually see skin effect. So what happens at high frequencies with skin effect is the resistance goes up and it's just not a very uniform um, impedance. And pre probably people are saying, well, you don't really need that. You know, it's, it's theoretical. Yeah, to some extent it is theoretical, but we are audioholics and we measure everything. And my view on cables is, at the very minimum, a cable should measure at least as good as 10 gauge zip cord, like the Blue Jeans 5T00 UP cable that I always use. That's my bare minimum for a high performance cable. And in my opinion, the Claris cable didn't live up to that. So I asked Kimber to send me the ATCs, enough ATCs to wire up the system, because each one of these speakers requires um, three cables for each speaker plus a jumper cable from the top to the bottom subs and then two cables for the center channel so you're looking at you know four eight ten cables so kimber sent me these atcs and i've reviewed these in the past and i keep coming back to this cable i just really like number one i like the way it looks even though it's pre it's relatively a thin cable the resistance on this cable is equivalent to nine gauge cable so it actually has lower resistance than 10 gauge which is a good thing, less resistance is better. The other thing I like is it's very low inductance. It's like four times lower inductance than 10 gauge zip cord. And I'll show you the charts and the measurements and everything. And this, uh, this cable is pretty much immune to skin effect, way past the audio band. So it really lives up to the hype. This is a well-engineered cable. Uh, the capacitance, of course, is four times higher than regular zip cord. That shouldn't be much of a problem with today's modern amplifiers and you've got you know good matching on your speakers with good crossovers you should be okay i've never had a problem with this cable causing any type of oscillations or anything like that it's not a super high capacitance cable not like the old gohertz where they used to sandwich the conductors on top and would give you nanofarads per foot this is more like 100 picofarads per foot it's pretty reasonable but what i like too about this cable is the terminations on them i love the fact that you um, have different termination options and they're just a little, they have a little Torx bit that you screw on and off. And my favorite termination is this uh, WBT connector. It's a really cool connector. You stick it into the terminal and then you just screw it in and it expands and it makes a really good lock. And that's the thing I've noticed a lot about, a lot about some of these high-end cables that their terminations aren't the greatest. They fall right off of the speaker, especially spade connectors. And this is any spade connector. I've never been a huge fan of spade connectors. I always like to have a really good expanding banana. So this is, a this is probably the best banana plug on the market, but it doesn't come cheap. You know, I think 11 foot pair of these cables with these connectors is around $1,000. 
But if you just do it with the standard connector, I think it saves you like an extra four or $500. So it's almost double the price just for these connectors. So that's a little crazy, but this cable measures really well. It's a beautiful looking cable. Um, it's very well built, never had anything fall apart on me. Now I wanted to show you something else you can consider. If you want to spend a little bit less money on Kimber cable and still get, I would say 95% of the performance. This is their 8PR. It has about a 10 or 11 gauge resistance. It has similarly low inductance, a little bit higher than the ATC, but still much lower than 10 gauge and lower capacitance as well. So this is a really good cable. It's, it's about half the price or so with the terminations. So I asked Kimber to just basically hook me up here and we are going to be connecting. We have a DSP module and an amplifier. So I'm gonna be using their Hero Balanced XLRs. Never checked these out before. But here's, let me just show you what you get with the Kimber. So they give you this little baggie. And when you pull out the bag, open up the bag, there you go, you got the cables with these beautiful connectors. So guys, I know that this is audio jewelry. I'm gonna be the first to tell you, I'm not gonna tell you that this is gonna make the mid-range sound more chocolatey. My wife's not standing on the other end of the room saying that once I put these cables on, my system sounds better. Believe me, I hear that a lot from audiophiles. The first thing they do is they basically tell you the wife who has no interest in audio suddenly hears amazing clarity. Like a veil has been lifted. I never have. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you that. I will tell you that these cables are very consistent. I, I like the way they perform measurably. I could, I could rest well at night knowing that I've got a cable that measures better than my benchmark, which is 10 gauge zip cord. And it looks awesome. I mean, let's face it, this looks way better than, hold on a minute. This is zip cord, see? It's ugly. It's not pretty, but it's good. But if you want something that looks better, we got the Kimber APR and the ATC. So guys, I hope you like this video. Please thumb it up. Please subscribe. Tell us what cables you're using. I'm kind of curious as to how you're getting your audio file fix. Do you believe in the cable magic that's being um, put out there by all these companies? Do you like to pray to your cables? Do you like to know the measurements of your cables? Because in my opinion, if you don't see the published measurements of a cable, run from them. Because you don't know what these guys are doing. Most of the companies that are making these cables don't have degreed engineers on staff. They don't measure them. They just do a lot of voodoo, put a fancy jacket on it, and then they hope that you know it'll get glowing reviews in the press. One thing I like about Kimber is they actually, they actually do their own weaves. They have a machine that does all the braided cables. So this is a pretty complex uh, process that they do here. So they actually put effort into the cable. I know it's not cheap, but it's, it's uh, build quality is top notch. So guys, I hope you like this video. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.